Indeed, and we saw stories earlier in the week, uh, mayors in communities with high Indigenous populations saying the people I'm talking to either don't know what the voice to Parliament is or, or they're inclined to, to vote no. There's certainly no consensus. But one of the other things Bernie said today is that she is going to dictate to the voice to Parliament the things it should be focusing on. Take a look. I will ask the voice to consider four main priority areas. Health education, jobs and housing. Now, I thought the point of the voice to Parliament was that it could advise the government, uh, an executive government, on anything it wanted to that related to Indigenous people at any time it liked. I, I didn't know that the setup would be that Linda would tell them what to tell her about. That's exactly right. And that speaks to the whole idea of the voice being independent, right? And, you know, again, uh, she can suggest whatever she wants to um, whatever this voice is going to be, but they have the constitutional right uh, to be able to address any issue that they think requires addressing. And we know that Indigenous Australians, we're all individuals in our own right. Some are uh, activist types, uh, some are common sense types. But uh, it, with such an entity, you can guarantee that there will be egos, that there will be different opinions, there will be those who want to execute an act activist argument. There are those who probably want to genuinely address those four particular issues that the mm -hmm. minister is suggesting. But ultimately... This is all hearsay. There, there is no, um, there's no, we, we cannot say anything about the voice right now because as we're being told, this will be a matter for Parliament to determine mm. mm -hmm. going forward. So yep. no matter what Minister Bernie says now, it's not in concrete, it's not set in stone. And to your point about independence, Bernie was asked today why the voice to Parliament has to be in the Constitution. This was her answer. One question I'm some, sometimes asked is, why does the voice need to be in the Constitution? Why can't it just be legislated? Well, there are two main reasons, everyone. Firstly, a voice or representative body cannot be truly independent or give frank advice to, to the government of the day if the government of the day can abolish it with the stroke of a pen. I mean, that's just plainly wrong on so many fronts. A, to independence. What does that mean, that this new na uh, National Anti-Corruption Commission, for instance, is not independent because it's not in the Constitution, it's legislated? Is the ABC not independent because it's not in the Constitution, it's legislated? And, by the way, uh, even if it is legislated, you, you can't just delete it at the stroke of a pen. You need a vote. Exactly right. There's a, there's a huge process that has to take place um, throughout Parliament in order to, uh, you know, get rid of a body like ATSIC was uh, got rid of previously, and that was a bipartisan decision um, by both sides uh, at that stage. But you're absolutely right. I mean, is the Minister suggesting that the Solicitor General, therefore, is not independent uh, to the government of the day? <laughs> I mean, you know, we're relying here on, on, on advice provided by the Solicitor General for the purpose of um, this whole exercise of, uh, you know, of the voice to Parliament. So is that what she's suggesting? Mm. It's, it's just, you know, it's not here nor there. Uh, it's all over the place. There's no sort of coherent argument. And that's what I felt like I was watching today during her, um, the de you know, her delivering her address. I felt like I was watching a train wreck. And yep. then when... Questions were put to her, they were just not answered.